Well, a warm welcome to today's talk and we're going to be carrying on looking at natural immunity after infection today and a lot of this is going to be based on the talk we did with Dr Stefan Plitz and this was his original paper that, that, uh, that brought this to our attention here. SARS coronavirus 2 reinfections. So this is the main paper that St Stefan was the lead author on. So this is the original paper, that's the YouTube video we did, but this has given rise to some important questions from you uh, that we're going to try and uh, answer now as, as best as we can, and, and then Stefan's helped me with some of the information on this. First question, do you also have a significant protection against reinfection when your first SARS coronavirus 2 infection was asymptomatic? So if you've had asymptomatic infection, is that going to give you ongoing longer term natural immunity and the answer to this question is yes it will and this is based largely on an article that's been accepted by the uh, journal of clinical infectious diseases and here we see the exchange between the authors uh, about that article and the article itself should be out uh, the full article it's uh, should be out fairly fairly soon on this the discussions have been going on for for a little time now it is quite frustrating how delayed academic publishing can be. But reinfection with Delta data, so this is reinfection with Delta. We'll have Omicron data shortly. Previous infection, whether symptomatic or asymptomatic, reduced hospitalizations by 85%. So natural immunity giving good levels of protection against hospitalization with Delta. And what about uh, effectiveness against symptomatic reinfection? So knowing that you're symptomatically reinfected. Protection from symptomatic uh, infection versus asymptomatic infection. So again, uh, to what degree are you protected from uh, symptomatic infection if you've had symptomatic previous infection or asymptomatic reinfection? And the answer turns out it doesn't actually make too much difference. You're getting good levels of protection against Delta symptomatic infection at least, whether you had symptomatic earlier infection or whether you had asymptomatic earlier infection. So if you'd had symptomatic previous infection you had 92.9% protection, asymptomatic previous infection 85.9% protection and for the sample size it involves that difference may not be significant. So we can say that symptomatic infection and asymptomatic infection are both giving future protection against hospitalizations and against future symptomatic infections, at least with Delta. Uh, both symptomatic and asymptomatic infections appear to provide strong protection against future severe disease, direct quote from the authors. These data are extremely important as so many infections are asymptomatic, Stefan uh, comments. So um, more people are going to have levels of immunity uh, than we believe. Of course, unless you have an antibody test, you're not going to know that. This is the, this is the problem with this. Question two. Uh, are the data on natural immunity also valid for the Omicron variant? Now, this is a very good question. And so far, the answer appears to be yes. Now, of course, we're at more tentative data here. So the answer to this question is taken from this, protection against the Omicron variant from previous SARS coronavirus 2 uh, infection, because of course we've had less time to gather, to gather this data. So this is not a published peer-reviewed article, it's a letter to the New England Journal of Medicine based on data from Qatar. Now, uh, in addition, we performed sensitivity analysis that included adjustments for vaccination status and that excluded vaccinating persons from the analysis, the authors say. In other words, this is looking at people who are not protected by a vaccine. So it's looking at some people that are protected by previous infection, other people that basically aren't protected at all in this, in this data set. Protection against reinfection is uh, moderately lower for the Omicron variant. Well, I think we do know that. We know that people are getting reinfected with Omicron. And we'll look at how moderately in a minute. The, the, the effectiveness of uh, previous infection in preventing reinfection was established to be, so um, protection, 90% protection against the alpha variant in alpha variant times, 85.7% uh, against the beta variant, 90% against the delta variant, down to 56% protection against the Omicron variant. And remember that's uh, protection against reinfection uh, the, the effectiveness of previous infection in preventing 
reinfection. So this is pe protecting against infection. So we see that people are likely, well, there's a 56% chance they'll be protected. So there's a 44% chance that they can get reinfected if exposed to Omicron. So Omicron, many more reinfections than previous variants, as we knew. But the important thing, perhaps, well, per certainly really, is protection against severe critical fatal illness is similar uh, for, uh, for Omicron as for other variants. Now, the effectiveness with respect to severe critical or fatal COVID-19, the protection was 49.6 uh, against the Alpha variant, 88% protection against the Beta variant, 95 to 100% protection against the Delta variant, uh, which of course was more pathogenic, and 80, basically 88% against the Omicron variant. So we see that with these past few variants, we've got comparable levels of protection against severe disease in people that are infected with Omicron. So we can say whether people have been symptomatically or asymptomatically infected with a, a previous variant, they're getting good levels of protection against symptomatic illness, well, 56% protection against sym symptomatic illness, but about 85 to 87% protection against severe disease and resulting in hospitalisation. So the effectiveness with, with respect to severe disease, there the figures, there 69 against alpha, 88 against the beta, 95 to 100 against the uh, delta and 88% against the Omicron. So really quite encouraging uh, for people that are getting Omicron infection, much less likely to be ill now if they've had previous infection, even if they haven't been vaccinated. And the median interval period uh, for previous infections, in other words, how long this immunity is lasting, uh, 354 to 376 days with a median times. So I think we can see that this natural immunity is lasting at least a year, at least a year that this protection is being carried on. Question three, is Omicron uh, really not so mild? So is Omicron more pathogenic or not? Now, this question is answered from the New England Journal of Medicine, as far as we have it uh, here. Uh, challenges in inferring intrinsic severity of the SARS coronavirus to Omicron variant. So this is quite difficult to do, but it's been done fairly successfully in a peer-reviewed publication from South Africa. And the answer is, um, according to data from individuals who remained unvaccinated, and did not have a previous SARS coronavirus 2 infection, the severity in terms of causing hospitalisation was about 75% of the Delta variant. So is Omicron less intrinsically pathogenic than Delta? Yes, it only causes about 75% as many severe cases, meaning the massively lower amounts of hospitalisation we are having now in Omicron is largely due to the infection uh, the infection, previous infection and previous vaccination that is induced immunity in individuals. So what we are seeing is the effect of Omicron on a largely immune or partly immune population, because we know in the UK, for example, 98% of people have had uh, now have antibodies. So if Omicron had come along as the very first variant, then we would still have had a lot of hospitalizations and deaths because it's 75% as pathogenic as Delta. So it would have still been a big problem had it not been for the immunity, but with a re slightly reduced pathogenicity and the great amount of immun immunity, it's become a much smaller problem in terms of severe disease, hospitalizations and deaths. Now, this is a comment from these authors here from this paper. Um, Viruses don't inevitably evolve towards being less virulent. Evolution simply selects those that uh, excel at multiplying. In the case of COVID-19, in which the vast majority of transmissions occur before disease becomes severe, reduced severity may not be di but directly selected for at all. So if, if you have a very severe uh, disease that's killing its hosts quickly, then uh, the virus isn't going to survive because the virus will at least lot partly die with the host. But that, that's, that's not the case because of the asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic infection. So reduced severity may not be directly selected for at all. Indeed, previous SARS coronavirus 2 variants with enhanced transmissibility, alpha and delta, appeared to have greater intrinsic severity than immediate uh, ancestors. Previously documented variants. In other words, we have been remarkably fortunate with Omicron that it is intrinsically less pathogenic, but much more transmissible. 
Um, but because it's hitting a, a population which has been largely vaccinated with some natural immunity as well, at least in, in, in the United Kingdom, that's the case. Of course, in Africa, Omicron has hit a population with very low levels of vaccination, but very high levels of natural immunity. And they've still had very low levels of hospitalisation and death. But we can't really compare those directly because of the younger demographic in Africa. So there we are. I hope that helps. That The natural immunity is looking remarkably promising. With Omicron, people getting infected with Omicron, it looks like we can carry on expecting much lower levels of hospitalizations and deaths, which is great. Uh, and it also looks like that's going to be the Omicron, as more and more people become infected with Omicron, whether that's symptomatic or asymptomatic, it looks like that's going to produce lots and lots of enhanced natural immunity. Now, we can't say that for sure yet. We can say that we're sure back in Delta times, but we can't say it sure yet back in Omicron times because the time has simply not passed. But it is looking very, very promising. And one of the things Dr. Do Dr. Uh, Plitz did emphasise in his talk with us was that, um, OK, there might be changes in the spike protein with Omicron, but all, all these other genes remain, all these other proteins remain basically the same. So the, the nucleocapsid, the envelope, the membrane protein, these are going to be the same or essentially the same in many new variants because it's not just one or two antigens that is recognised, it's about 22 or 24 antigens that are recognised. So I think that all looks fairly promising for ongoing natural immunity, for the longevity of natural immunity. It's looking like it's at least a year. We're, hopefully it's going to be much longer, of course, but looking like it's going to be at least a year. And the Omicron variant is going to be producing huge amounts of natural immunity as we speak, whether the infection is symptomatic or asymptomatic almost certainly, based on previous data. Of course, we'll carry on watching it to, to make sure this is the case. But uh, it's looking very, uh, very, very promising for this widespread immunity. Doesn't mean to say it'll go away. It'll be endemic for a large period of time. But of course, that means we'll keep on getting reinfected. And every time we get reinfected, that will give us an immune boost. Now, just before we finish today, lots of you have been asking about the textbooks. Uh, so um, these, these are the textbooks I wrote. There's physiology notes and pathophysiology notes and these are available absolutely free for download you can download them absolutely free in pdfs so that we wanted to increase the distribution of it and if you live in the uk you can still get hard copy of this one which i'll put the link on i think we've got about i think we've got about 700 of these of these left so if you want a hard copy of one of these you can you can order one from the from the link below but other but of course you could as well or, or either you can download them both they're completely free on PDF and it, it, it just it's sort of my teaching style really it's lots of lots of kind of um diagrams that you can you can color you can color in so if you want to know about kidneys there you go I think I think it's probably because I'm a bit dyslexic I tend to think in diagrams so <laughs> um very often when I was teaching I'd draw the diagram first and then just write the words on <laughs> write some words on after um and it's the same same with the pathophysiology we've got um Lots of interesting disease processes going on at the cellular level and uh, at the whole brain level, for example, in that in that example. So do download. Those are completely free. There's, there's a mobile phone friendly version, so you can stick it on your phone and then one day when you're bored at a bus stop, get it out and you can read it on your phone. Or, of course, you can put the PDF on your computers and print it out and basically do whatever you want. We'll put that in the public domain now. So thank you for watching. <laughs>